you know, the animation is incredible and the piece is incredible. And so these are two works of art that I think by themselves on their own really stand as excellent works of art. But when you put them together, in my opinion, it makes something like even greater and more mind blowing. I met Donica Dennehy when I was performing a piece of his called The Hunger, uh, and I'd never heard any music like that before. Like, it just kind of blew my mind. I basically had to learn a whole new language to be able to perform his music, and it's a language I found incredibly addictive, uh, and I just, I wanted a piece of my own. Nadia and I got on great, and we were chatting after the concert, uh, and uh, I think I think, I can't remember who said which, who would like the piece, but somehow mutually we wanted to have a piece together. And then at some point he was saying, you know, viola's awesome, I can imagine a whole bunch of violas, and maybe some violas da gamba, do you know viola da gamba? And that made me really excited because I had just for the first time played um, some duets with a friend of mine called Liam Byrne. And she said, oh, I know this fabulous viol player in London. Nadia had come to stay with me while she was playing some other concert in London, and we drank about a bottle and a half of whiskey on the roof together one night, and then woke up the next morning and somehow decided that the best thing for our hangover was to play a Fantasia for two vials by Orlando Gibbons, uh, which worked a lot better than you might expect it would have. And then me being me, what I usually do is like book a recording session and hope everything kind of works itself out in time for the recording session. So we booked this thing in August um, and uh, Donica did not finish the piece. He had sort of started on the piece. And I was behind on this piece. And uh, I hope Nadia has forgiven me now. But so I turned up with the piece half done. But we figured, you know what, let's just use this time. And so this, this, the um, studio where I booked the session is a wonderful place in Iceland called Greenhouse Studios. It's just this kind of like utopia of a live-work environment. Greenhouse has always been uh, a place not only to record music, but also to work through ideas, uh, to record things and see what sticks and to sort of combine the recording and rehearsal and development process in a way that one normally doesn't usually get a chance to. Uh, it's an incredible luxury and quite a magical space. So it was fantastic to get to spend two separate weeks there with Nadia and Donica, kind of indulging in a, a, a creative process as well as doing a lot of recording. It was a very unusual piece for me because I mean, rock musicians have this all the time where they actually have this kind of luxury of being able to spend time at the studio. But the studio environment influenced the conception of the piece. And, um, and so I recast the piece based on our experience in the studio. There was a wonderful kind of intensity and focus to this kind of like, literally hot off the press kind of recording. One of the things that Donica asks the viol players in this piece to do uh, that's a little bit unusual for us is uh, to play a lot of microtones, that is the notes in between the notes. I say it's unusual for us because it's not something that we normally do in a historical repertoire, but it's also something that our instrument is weirdly very well equipped to do because the frets on the viola de gamba are not like the frets of the guitar, which are fixed pieces of metal. The viola de gamba frets are made out of old strings that are just tied around the neck, so they're very easy to adjust. In Donica's music, I just sort of adjust the frets slightly more extremely in order to play these microtones. It, 
in terms of the tuning in, te in tessellatum, um, you can reduce it to two types really. There's equal temperament, the standard equal temperament that people normally play in. And then there's a kind of tuning based on the overtone series. Because I think of it in certain places as being a melody that tends into equal temperament and in other places where it becomes part of this kind of vertical sonority and then I tune them all according to the overtones. And so at times in this piece it somehow changes into this vertical overtone series and then from that unravel melodies again. And by the time you get to the end of the piece all the melodies are from the overtones as well. And it's like I mean, it's not saying grand, but it's, it's like as if the piece teaches you a way to listen to it as it proceeds. The idea for the video came from Stephen Mertens, who is this animator. What I loved about him, what really sort of attracted me to his work, is that he has a musician sensibility in terms of the way that he goes about um, putting images and music together. He has a very musical eye. I think that Stephen Mertens' film is very beautiful, even though I had never actually imagined this piece with film. And it actually makes me hear some of the piece in a different way, which is very interesting. There's a lot of different sections, and architecturally, one of the reasons I love it so much is Donica constructed something that's really tight, like it's just excellently constructed. Um, and I wanted the animation to be similar, to like reflect, reflect the form of the piece and actually help listeners and audience members understand that form in real time. So. Um, I don't know, I just, I really, really love this project.